Hey, this is Chris at Talon Gaming, and today we're looking at a game by Supermassive Games and Bandai Namco Entertainment Europe, released in 2019, the Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan. The Dark Pictures Anthology is a series of intense, standalone, branching cinematic horror games. The games follow the short format horror genre that has been around for over 200 years. I'm sure many of you have heard of Creepshow, The Twilight Zone, or Tales from the Crypt. Man of Medan is the first installment in this series of games which feature psychological survival horror with multiple endings and allows you, the viewer, to actively participate and influence the story and its characters. This installment centers around a band of 20-somethings looking for an adventure while going diving to explore a World War II era plane wreck. They end up getting far more than what they bargained for. The game features offline play for single player with up to 5 friends or online with a friend. It's rated Mature 17 Plus and uses the Unreal 4 engine and everything it has to offer. The installments are each standalone episodes in the series and are available for about half the price when on sale. There's also a free demo available for download if you'd like to give it a try without any risk. Purchasing the game also includes a friend pass so you can play online with a friend without having to buy two copies. Man of Medan requires a GTX 750Ti or similar and a quad-core CPU with 8 gigs of memory and 80 gigs of free storage. A GTX 1060 or RX 580 is recommended. The game is also available for the PS4 and the Xbox One. Let's talk about some of the main aspects of the game. The Curator. He is the game's host and narrator who provides feedback and guidance periodically throughout the game. He'll explain the game, the story, and how it all works together while also providing a few hints to help you along the way. His wisdom will come in very handy, so be sure to pay attention to his words. And man, Your choices build or break relationships. Your characters live and die by the words you choose to say or not to say. Your actions and choices impact others and absolutely matter. And we have to live with those decisions or die by them. The relationships between characters influence how the characters act towards each other and affect the outcome of the story. You can view the traits of the current character and the relationships to other characters and what choices have affected them at any time during the game. You'll also find a life bearing panel which tracks your choices and actions during major turning points throughout the game. It's not a bad idea to keep an eye on these as they may help you in your next playthrough. While exploring, the game will indicate when an item is interactive by displaying an image of the mouse or gamepad. Some of these items include doors, lockers, and ladders. In many of the darker sequences, you'll have a flashlight available, which can be controlled independently. You can walk and explore the game, which is quite detailed. As you explore, you'll notice certain items are highlighted with a bit of an optical glare. These items provide backstory and count as a collectible item, so be sure to investigate. Let's talk about secrets, premonitions, and special features. Premonitions are viewed by looking at specific photos during the game. At this time you'll see a glimpse into a possible future and you should let this influence your decision making. Secrets found during the game are considered collectibles. They really help to provide extra depth to the overall story and better your overall understanding of what's going on around you. Both premonitions and secrets can be viewed again at any time after discovery. Some of the special features are unlocked by progressing through the game and completing a playthrough, others by collecting a certain number of secrets. Special features include things such as a history of the short form horror genre and the creation of the curator. Regarded by fans of the genre. At quite a few points during the game, you'll need to react to your environment to progress forward or avoid damage, potentially death. This is done by pressing the QTR buttons, or quick time reaction buttons, or moving your cursor to a specific point and clicking before the timer runs out. At other times, to open doors or overcome some form of resistance, you must rapidly press one of these QTR buttons. In some cases, you may get a second chance, but not all. There are real consequences to missing QTR events, so don't get too comfortable while playing. They'll often come up when you least expect them. Let's talk about graphics. Textures, for the most part, provide a very realistic looking environment. While it has its kinks, the overall presentation is quite impressive. The animations are good, but some of the walking and human movements aren't particularly accurate. Cutscenes, although the entire game is essentially an interactive cutscene, are quite good and look very nice. Overall, the graphical presentation here is fantastic despite a few shortcomings. Sound effects are excellent and very realistic. <laughs> Music is fantastic and very well orchestrated, certainly no computer generated or synthesized stuff here. Voice acting is a bit hit or miss, I'd like to think that it's spot on for the most part, 
But there are a few times I had a, a few laughs at how things were presented. Overall, the sound and oral presentation are quite nicely packaged and really immerse you into the experience. The story doesn't disappoint. The game starts off providing you a backstory and what's to come, and then returns you to present time. I felt like although a single playthrough of the game is relatively short, the story and its presentation you give you plenty enough to spark your interests. In the end, this is considered a short format horror, and it more than fulfills that expectation for me. On the PC, the controls use the typical WSAD format, but remapping of the controls left lots to be desired. I also seem to find myself having a hard time with the quick time reaction events using the default key bindings. On several occasions, I was caught off guard watching the story unfold, only to be required to react quickly, often to the detriment of the characters. The controls and point of view did at times feel a little confusing, as the camera angle will often change as you explore. That being said, the game is quite fun to play and not what I would consider at all frustrating. The game is quite simple and easy to play without really needing much for an explanation. I spent about four hours completing a single playthrough. If you play this with friends at all, or want to see more of the six possible endings, you'll certainly get a lot more game time from your purchase. I really wasn't sure what to expect when I decided to try this one out. What I found is that it wasn't so much a game as it was an interactive horror flick where you, the audience, directly influences the progression of the story. It's an experience I'm glad I've had. I'll admit this quote-unquote game isn't for everyone. Those looking for action or don't enjoy cutscene heavy games should look elsewhere. But for those who enjoy horror, jump scares, getting creeped out, or realistic blood and violence, then look no further. This might be what you're looking for. In the end, we're playing games or watching movies to be entertained. And in this, the game succeeds. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the review, don't forget to smash the like button and let us know. We'd like to hear what you think of the game, the anthology, the concept, and the review itself in the comments section. This is Chris from Talent Gaming, signing out. Till we meet again, we will meet again. It's inevitable.